This video is the second in the series describing the configuration of the Trilithic Seeker D digital leakage detector using the Trilithic Seeker setup software. In this video, we'll look at the frequency presets section. Uh, in the example here, you'll see that I have frequency 1 and frequency 2 enabled. Frequency 1 is my default. I have the frequency for number 1 set at 612 megahertz, and for number 2 I have it set at 138 megahertz. The Seeker D has to be used with the CT4 channel tagger. The CT4 generates two tiny carriers in between existing channels in your channel lineup. In the states they're almost always at 612 and 138 megahertz. I have a tag option with the CT4, tag 1 or tag 2. This is in the event you're in an overbuilt system uh, or you have an, an MSO in an adjacent area and they also use Trilithic's leakage equipment. You can set your tagger to use tag 1. Uh, they can set theirs to use tag 2 uh, so that uh, you're not picking up their leaks, they're not picking up your leaks. The tag frequency in the Seeker D has to exactly match the tag setting in the CT4. The next column is secondary preset. You'll notice for frequency 1 I have 2 selected. It's a drop down menu. I can select none all the way up to 0. Uh, in this case I'm using 2. What this means is this. While it's in the cradle, the Seeker D has the ability to monitor both frequencies uh, at one time. Uh, the way we do this is by toggling back and forth quickly enough that we can cover both frequencies in one ride out but also slowly enough that uh, I can dwell on each specific frequency to make sure there's no leaks in that area. For frequency 1 I'm using 612 secondary preset 2 or frequency 2 which is set to 138. That means when the Seeker D is set to frequency 1 on the cradle, in the cradle rather, it's toggling between 612 megahertz and preset 2 or frequency 2, 138 megahertz. If I have the Seeker D set to frequency 2 while it's in the cradle, it's toggling between 138 megahertz and preset 1 or frequency 1, 612 megahertz, same difference. I can also dedicate a ride out to one specific frequency. If I say want to do my ride out and only look for high frequency leaks, I can enable frequency 3, set it for 612 and not have a secondary preset, which means the device will not toggle between an alternate frequency. Same way with the aeronautical band, I can set a frequency at 138, not have a secondary preset if I want to do a dedicated ride out just looking for the 138 megahertz. A couple things to remember. Um, while the device is in the cradle and it is toggling back and forth between the two frequencies, let's say I have it on frequency 1 in the cradle, I'm monitoring both frequencies, however the numerical display I see on the seeker is for the primary, for the 612 megahertz. If, say, I pick up a leak at 138 megahertz and it's high enough to break squelch, I might hear the audible alert, but I'll look over and not see any numerical display. I'll have to hit the yellow snapshot key on the seeker D to display the numerical value that I'm picking up for the alternate frequency. Um, once again, let's say I have it on frequency 2 in the cradle, which my primary is 138 megahertz. If I pick up a leak at 612, high enough to break squelch, I'll hear the audible alert, but I, not, I won't see a, a numerical display. I'll have to hit the yellow snapshot key um, to see the numerical display for the 612 megahertz frequency. Another thing to remember is the Seeker D only toggles between the two frequencies while it's in the cradle. In handheld mode, if I've got to find 
uh, a 612, a high frequency leak um, by walking the plant, say I'm given a work order, I know the address, um, I'm trying to find the actual impairment that's causing that leak. If it's at 612 megahertz, I want to make sure that the seeker D is set to frequency one. In handheld mode, it's only looking at the, the primary frequency. So I need to make sure I have the correct antenna on it uh, and it's set to the right frequency. Same way for the 138. If I'm doing a, uh, if I'm walking the plant looking for an impairment that's causing a, a leak at 138 megahertz, I want to make sure in this case I have the seeker set to frequency two and I have the correct antenna on it. A couple other things, read snapshots and sync clock to PC. The Seeker D has the ability to uh, save pre and post fix snapshots if you're auto closing work orders in law. This just gives you the ability to see those snapshots that have been recorded. Sync clock to PC, you shouldn't have to use this um, what it does is it synchronizes the clock in the seeker to the time on the, the PC. Typically this is done when you upload to the law server or it will get the time set from the GPS information. In the next video we'll look at the uh, antenna correction settings and some of the options we have left on the right.